Hello friends, you're welcome again. Yes, it's so good to be here again. I'm so happy to be here and I hope you're happy to see me too. All right, welcome to another time of fellowship with your friends, fellowship in God's presence where we share the word of God. We praise, we sing, we dance and we have fun with one another. Yes welcome welcome go call everybody you know how we do it go call everybody you can't be here alone enjoy this much fun go and call everyone tell them it's time yes auntie rachel is here tell them to come and call everybody tell them to come yes are they all here okay let's start now it's time to pray bow your heads for prayers in jesus name Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. Thank you for bringing us together once again. We're about to study your word. We're about to have fun with our friends. We're about to sing praises to you and dance and shake our bodies. Lord, we ask, oh God, that you come be with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Welcome, everybody. Yes, this is another time of fellowship with one another a time of fellowship a time of the word a time of singing dancing a time of praises just having fun do whatever you want to do in god's presence yeah the presence of god right <laughs> okay it's time for <clears throat> yes praise and worship and we'll be right back well Hey friends, how are you doing today? All right, today we are going to do a little bit of warm up before we go into the prayer session. Are you ready? Are you ready? All right. If you're happy and you know, say amen. I didn't hear that. I didn't hear that. If you're happy and you know, say amen. If you're happy and you know, say amen. If you're happy. If you're happy and you know, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know, and you really want to show. If you're happy and you know, make some noise. Make some noise. Yeah. So we are going to start with this song. It says, My God is good, though. Say, My God is good, though. Hallelujah. Come on. You are going to dance. You are going to dance. Are you ready? Hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Hey, come on. Say, hey, 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 my God is good, oh. Hey, hey, my God is good, oh. Come on, dance. When you see me dance, I dance like. 
One day, a farmer went out to sow some seeds. As he walked along, he threw the seeds wherever he went. Each seed was the same, bright and green, and full of the potential for life. Some of the seeds fell on stony ground. There was nowhere for their roots to grow. They just sat there. Birds spotted the seeds from the air. They flew down and ate them up. Some seeds fell on rocky places, where there wasn't much soil. They quickly grew at first, but the soil was shallow. And when the sun came up, they withered and died, because they had no root. Some other seeds fell among thorns. The seeds started to grow, but the thorns grew bigger, and they choked the new plants, so they didn't produce any crop. They just disappeared. But other seeds fell on good soil. They grew and grew, strong and bright, and the life in the seeds bore an amazing crop. Some with thirty grains, some sixty, and some even a hundred grains of corn. So intense. <laughs> yes, you're welcome back to this session. Yes, we're still in October. October is about to end, but we're still here. Still very here. Yes, I was still in the parable of the sower series. We're still talking about the parable of the sower. The sower, the farmer, you can call him whatever they you want to call him, that went out to sow seed. Some fell among the pathway, that was week one, and some fell among uh, uh, the rocky ground, that's week two, and some fell among the thorns, that's week three, and then we're in week four. And the topic today, drum roll, bush, is the good seed, the seed that fell on good ground. Yes! The seed that fell on good ground. That's the topic for today. Yes. The topic for today is the seed that fell on good ground. And the memory verse is Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Matthew chapter 9 verse 36. Did I forget again? Please go get your Bibles. Oh, why do I keep forgetting? I have my Bible here with me. Or oh, do you already have your Bible? Oh, good, good, some of you do. Okay, please go get your Bible because we're about to read the Bible. You know we are big girls and big boys. We can read. So why are we coming to this session without having our Bibles with us? Okay, the memory verse is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 37. We're going to read it together, okay? When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plenty, 
but the workers are few. I'm going to take it again. The memory verse is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 to 37. When he saw the crowd, who are they talking about here? Jesus. I hope you know that. Yes, Jesus. We're taking it again. Sorry for that break. I just wanted you to be sure you know who we're talking about. We're talking about Jesus here. Memory verse is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 and 37. When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plenty, but the workers are few. The harvest is much, the laborers are few. Pray God of the harvest, send us labor. I can't remember that song, but I know I used to sing it in Sunday school when I was much younger. I'm going to task, I need to tax my brain to be able to remember that song. So the topic once again is the seed that fell on good soil. The seed that fell on good soil. You know week one we talked about the seed that fell on the pathway. Week two, we talked about the seed that fell among the seed that fell on rocky ground, and apart. And week three, we talked about the seed that fell among thorns. And today, we are talking about the seed that fell on good soil. The seed that fell on good soil. And today, we are going to be learning how the soil seed fell on the good soil. And then we also discover how wonderful the word of God is and how it can help us to grow spiritually and help us to have everlasting life. Help us to grow spiritually and have everlasting life. Okay? And then we're going to be reading about this whole parable again in Matthew chapter 13. Matthew chapter 13 where we have the parable of the sower. You remember I said last week that Jesus you remember I said last week that Jesus was ha having a conversation with his disciples he was having a discussion with his disciples and telling them stories the same way your big uncles and your or your grandpa and your grandma will tell you stories so Jesus was telling his disciples stories he asked them to sit down okay so we're going to read that in Matthew chapter 13 verse 8 should we start from the beginning Let's start. That same day, Jesus went out to the house and sat by the lake. Means he sat by the river. You can call it a seashore. You can call it the lake. And then, let's go over to verse 8. Still, other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop. Let me take that Bible verse again. So we're going to be looking at this parable in Matthew chapter 13, verse 8. Remember I told you that Jesus gathered his disciples and was telling them about the parable, was telling them a story. The same way your grandpa and your grandma will tell you stories. That's how Jesus was telling his disciples stories. Disciples are followers. So the people who were following Jesus at that time, the way we are following Jesus here now. Okay? Yes, he told them a parable about a sower. He saw a farmer who went along sowing seeds and he fell in three different places. Who can remember the first one? Pathway. The second one, rocky ground. The third one, among thorns. And now we're talking about the one that fell on good soil. Okay, so Matthew 13 verse 8. It says, Still other seed fell on good soil, where it produced a crop, a hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. Whoever has ears, let him hear. The, 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 the seed that was sown, because it fell on a fertile ground, fell on a good ground. You know, there were a lot of manure. You know how you have, um, you do agriculture in school. You do science. Or oh, don't you? Hey, so why are you not looking at me that way? You do science in school now. Mm -hmm. Or oh, you even have gardens in your house. So, oh, you don't used to follow mommy and daddy when they are planting. You see now. Okay, so you know, this, the, the ground, the garden had a lot of manure, had fertilizer. You know, they watered the garden all the time. So the seed had enough nutrient to be able to grow well. And then when it grew, 
it brought a different kind of harvest, different kind of fruit. Imagine planting an orange seed and when it was going to grow. And then some had 100. Imagine harvesting 100 oranges from one tree. <gasps> That's a mighty harvest. And some had 60. 60! Just from one seed that was planted. And then some had 30. Just from one seed that was sown. And then, verse 23. Let's quickly move over to verse 23. It said, But the seed falling on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it. This is the one who produces a crop, yielding a hundred, sixty, and thirty times what was sown. So what is the seed that we are sowing here? The word of God. We are simply sowing the word of God. Yes, you see, we should allow the word of God to grow in our heart. When we receive the seed as the word of God, it should meet the good soil, good soil of respect, good soil of obedience, good soil of truthfulness, good soil of honesty, good soil of kindness, so that our seed can have enough nutrients to grow. It can have enough nutrients to grow. To be strong plant. As Christians, we should share our seed with others. We should share our faith with others. How do we share our seed? By sharing our faith. We should share the good news to other people. Don't hide, don't hide your Christianity. If you are a child of God, be bold enough to say you are a child of God. That means when other kids are doing silly things, they are being naughty, you will not join them. <laughs> you won't join them. You just say, oh, sorry, I don't want to be a part of this. I'm sorry, I don't want to be a part of this. That's how you show that your seed is growing in a good soil. Okay? You know that the body of Christ can only grow when we share the good seed, the good news. The body of Christ can only grow when we share the good news with others. And that good news, remember I told you earlier, is the word of God. If you do not share the word of God, the kingdom cannot grow. People will not know about it. And I told you last week that sharing the word of God is not only by talking. It can be by your, your lifestyle. It can be by your action. When people know that, oh, this boy is always telling the truth. They must say, ah, ah, are you a child of God? You said yes. You say yes, I'm a child of God. But they know that you are very honest. They know that you are kind. You are gentle. You are not the one that runs around and scatters the whole class. And the teacher will be like, Ah, I'm tired of you, this boy. I'm tired of you, this girl. No. And the teacher will be frustrated. You should not be the person that will frustrate his or her teacher. Let your teacher see you and say, Oh my God, I wish all the children in this class can be like you. You are so gentle. You are so kind. You are so honest. You are so truthful. It shows that your seed has a good soil to grow. It shouldn't be the one that they are saying, hmm, look at this one. Are you sure you, you attend Sunday school? Are you sure you attend one church? Are you sure you are a member of one church? Don't, don't, don't give people a reason to say that. Give, brother, give people a reason to say, oh, wow, you are so well behaved. No wonder. Ah, ah, I was wondering why you are so well. I didn't even know. So you are a child of God. Oh, wow, that is so good. See? That is how children of God should behave. And in case you have someone around you who is not behaving well, it's not to push the person away and say, mm, don't be my friend. I can't be friends with you. Try and bring the person closer to you and tell them about the good news. And good news is telling people about Jesus. Tell them how Jesus came into the world to die for their sins and to save them. Tell them how Jesus is coming back again to take us home into glory. Tell them how Jesus can wash away their sins and it will not be remembered again. So no matter how bad the, the things that they have committed, tell them that Jesus is always ready to forgive. Even before we open our mouth to confess, he will forgive and then he will embrace us back as his own. 
Those are the good news that you should be sharing with people. Okay? The topic, once again, is the seeds that fell on good soil. And the memory verse is Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 and 37. Matthew chapter 9, verse 36 and 37. And it says, When he saw the crowd, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. So let me ask you, are you ready to be one of the workers that we that we work for God? Yes. Don't say no because once you are a child of God, you automatically become a worker for God. And what are the work you do for God? Number one, by showing, by living a good life. That's the first work you will do for God. By living a good life so that your life can talk to other people. Your life can be an example to other people. Number two, by sharing the good news. And what is the good news? The good news is the word of God. The good news is the word of God. And number three, by helping others come to Jesus. So when you see people who are doing wrong things, you don't just chase them away or stop talking to them and look at them as sinners. They might be sinners, but God doesn't see us that way. He's, he's always waiting, waiting. Oh, I wish it's my child would just turn and say, and, and confess his sins or her sins and turn to me. That's how God is waiting for us. So that's one of the ways you can be a worker for God. Also, you can be a worker for God by inviting people to church. Yes. Invite people to church. Or invite, tell your friends to watch this online. Just the way you are watching. You can tell you when you are playing with your friend. You can tell your friend, do you know there's one, there was one of my, my, my church videos that I'm always watching and it's so fun and we praise, we sing, we learn God's word. Invite them, let them join. You can also be a worker for God by, yes I already mentioned that inviting people to church, invite people to Sunday school, invite people to, to join this online. Those are the ways you can be a worker for God so that our seed will keep growing. Remember, our seed is on a, on a good soil already and it needs to keep growing. Okay? And then, first of all, you even need to plant a seed. What if there's, there's a good soil and there's no seed to plant? Remember, the seed is the word of God. So, I have a few questions for you today. The first question I have to hear I have to ask you today says where did the seed fall on? The seed has been falling in so many places. It's falling in three other places. Today, where did the seed fall on? Yes, it fell on good soil. On a good soil. And what happened to the seed that fell on good soil? It grew. It germinated. Yes, it grew so tall, so big, and so wide. The roots just went different areas because it fell on good soil. There was, there was fertilizer, there was manure, there was water, there was everything on the soil. And what, what was the harvest? Some in what? Hundred, some in sixty, and some in thirty. Okay? How does the seed falling on good soil compare to us being Christian? It means that we need to share our faith with others. We need to share with others. The, the Jesus that you have received in your heart, you need to share it to someone else. In love, in kindness, in doing good. Okay? Then, is this an important message to you? Do you, do you think this is an important message to you? Do you think that Jesus, you know, we said Jesus was speaking to his disciples. Do you think this message, Jesus is also speaking to you about it? Yes, it is important because we need to spread the good news. The good news is not something you keep in your pocket. It's something you share to others. 
you keep sharing it to everyone around you okay how can we share the good news about jesus so many ways tell me just give me different ways we can share the good news by inviting people to church inviting people to watch the video inviting people to living a good life telling people about jesus in school in the mall but that doesn't mean you should just walk up to any stranger you see okay you know we should be careful be security conscious and we should also be wise so you just try and talk to at least the people you play with the people in school people in class just tell them when they are doing something wrong just tell them no don't do that jesus won't like that and they'll be like mm, assistant jesus who made you assistant Je don't just tell them no i'm not assistant jesus i'm just telling you that jesus will not like this that's how to share the good news that's how to share the gospel okay so the topic once again is the seed that fell among the seed that fell on good soil and the memory verse is matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and 37 when he saw the crowd he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few may god find us as worthy workers in jesus name that will be able to work for god yes we'll do the little we can for god by sharing his sharing the good news as the word of god inviting people to church inviting people to watch the video and by being kind being good to others okay and those who hear the good news and take it to heart and do according to what God has, has said about the good news. They are the people that will reap the fruit. They will reap benefits of the good news. Because if you have done something good, you automatically reap good. We, we can't do evil because we don't want to reap evil. So when you sow a good seed, you're going to reap good seed and we also follow jesus's rule and tell people about jesus follow his rule his rule you know them now you know don't steal don't tell lies don't don't be a false witness don't take what does not belong to you don't disobey your parents don't do bad stuff and all the likes follow his rules okay and then you know you know we can't we can't really be perfect we can't really be perfect we can't do everything all well and good but when we try when we have the desire in our heart to do good god will now help us to be able to do good yes you have to first of all have the desire you have to keep telling yourself no i don't want to do anything bad i don't want to do anything evil and then god will help you we empower you in jesus name we try to live our best life in pleasing god we try to live our best life the best when mommy and daddy tell you be in your best behavior that's how we want to live our life and god will keep helping us in jesus name amen so we've come to the end of today's lesson and today's lesson we learned about the seed that fell on good soil the seed that fell on good soil and that good soil talks about our hearts and how we receive the word of god in our heart and the things that we do when we receive the word of god and then when it comes when it falls in on good soil like that it, it has so many fruits so many harvests some in hundred, some in sixty, some in thirty. We have good, bountiful harvest. You see what the memory verse says: that the harvest was plenty, but the workers were few. Do you know why they were few? Because there were a lot of people who are more concerned about doing bad stuff. But we will not be concerned about doing bad stuff. We will always be concerned about doing good stuff, so that we'll be able to live a life that is pleasing unto God. The memory verse once again is Matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and 37 and it says when he saw the crowd he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples the harvest is plentiful but the workers are few. 
memory verses matthew chapter 9 verse 36 and 37 and the topic once again is the seed that fell on good soil may we all be may we all have good soil in our lives that when the seed of god comes into our hearts it will meet good soil so that we'll have plentiful harvest bountiful harvest so many harvests in jesus name amen i've come to the end of today's lesson today's fun time today's class today's video whatever you want to call it i'll see you some other time bye